Hello everyone, welcome back to this new episode. We've gained access to Gemini server. Now it's all about finding a path to getting root. Let's get started. So we were able to leverage a command injection vulnerability that we were found a, using an authenticated user. The authenticated user was created and we were able to bypass the activation feature so we've come a long way and I encourage those of you who are seeing this video for the first time to go back and see the previous videos about this challenge because that would explain a lot of things. Now, with that said, let's uh, try to enumerate this server and see if we find anything interesting. Now, remember, in a previous video, I wanted to understand how the export feature worked. And uh, I guess it would be placed in the root directory under the name of export.php. Yes, that's there. Let's cat its content, uh, PHP. And uh, what does it do? So it's taking the cookie value from the PHP session ID cookie. It's returning it back using the echo command. That's That explains why we've got the value back from the server, remember? Um, that was in a previous command, like this one, for example. The same content, we got it back. And um, what else? So it's trying to run an operating system command us using the uh, PHP's shell exec function. And it's using the wkhtml to pdf dash dash cookie PHP session ID. So this is the uh, cookie that is being used to fetch the profiles user and generates a PDF version and puts it under temp profile of PDF. And I guess the injection is uh, happening at this point here because we've been able to add a semicolon and then another command, which in this case was nothing but a reverse shell. And then it defines content dispos disposition and content type application PDF. That's the same header that we've had here. Okay, and the file name is profile.pdf. So that's our headers right here. And then it's trying to read that file. But because we didn't have anything written here, I guess, we got nothing, just the content of the cookie value. Okay, that explains why we could have a command injection vulnerability using that vulnerable parameter. So what I can do here is look for um, actually the running processes. And I'm interested in the processes run by root. So I would be a grep on the root user. So this one is the command that we are running. Remember, this is where the injection is happening after the wk2pdf dash dash cookie php session. This is what's getting run. Perfect. Uh, we have a bunch of old commands that we've run here as well. Nothing really interesting here. Okay. What else? Um, what are the services that are listening here? Grep listen. Okay, we have 3306, which is nothing but MySQL. It's listening on the loop, loop back. And we have a new service here as well. Okay, it's uh, listening on port 63. 79, I guess this is Redis. Um, 
Is this the process ID? PS grep that. Nope, it's not the ID. Redis. I've seen a Redis uh, CLI file when we were enumerating the user's home folder, but I don't see anything here related to Redis. Is there? So we have DH client. Oh, okay. We have Redis here. Redis server, which is running as root. Oh, okay. Yeah. So this process is running as root. I know that there are some uh, abuses against this uh, Redis servers, but I've never tried one before. Well, it's a, a good thing to learn a new attack technique. So Google is our friend here. This is uh, what a hacker typically always does. Whenever we hit a roadblock, we do more enumeration. Whenever we hit a new thing that we don't know, we Google it. So I guess we could just say Redis Prevesk and we land directly on hack tricks. Mm -hmm. So indeed the default port is 6379 and we can grab its banner using nmap but since uh, it's only listening on the loopback we can't reach it from outside. Uh, can we use netcat? Yes we can. Okay. What else do we have? So Redis authentication. Okay. By default, Redis can be accessed without credentials. Okay. However, it can be configured to support only password or username plus password. It's possible to set a password in redis.com file with the parameter require pass. Okay. So I guess, first of all, we need to see if uh, authentication is required, but we need to also interact with the, this server. How do we do that? Okay. Maybe we could use the netcat. Let's try that. So that would be netcat-v for verbose and then localhost and then the port 6379. Yeah, netcat not found. Okay. Well, netcat is not installed. Is there any like CLI for to interact? Oh, yeah. We can interact with it using Redis CLI. I wonder if it's installed. Well, since we have the server, I guess it exists. Yes, we have the CLI, so we can use it. Redis CLI and uh, we specify the host name so that would be localhost okay nothing oh error unknown command okay okay so i guess we could like run info oh no auth authentication required okay we need the authentication so that the password was mentioned here. Yep, it's under redis.conf and we need to grep for this require pass. Okay, let's do that. So that is um, maybe under etc. Maybe that's redis. Yep. Okay, so that's the config file. So we need to actually grep for that value under etc redis and this file. Okay, we have our password here. Let's copy it and reuse our redis-cli-hostname uh, localhost and then we need to use auth and then the paste in our password okay perfect now if I type info perfect 
Okay, we now authenticated successfully to the service and we are interacting directly with the Redis server. And we have a key space here with ID zero. So DB zero, I guess uh, the command is info. I don't recall what it is. So now we've been able to authenticate. How are we going to actually interact with the Redis server? What can we do to elevate our privileges? Mm hmm. I see that we could specify the key space. So that's our key space db0, db1. We can say info db0, I guess. Info db0. Nope. What about info0? Nope. In that example, the database zero and one are being used. So we have DB zero and one. Database zero contains four keys. But how do we say we want to the info of that database? Oh, okay. So uh, the info, the key space. So we need to use the select actually. So we need to select the database uh, zero in this case. Okay and keys star and then get key okay keys star so listing all the keys in the database we have a key called crack it and we could get that the value of that key oh we have a private key okay I wonder what this is. I'm going to save it here. Let's call it redis.private and paste in our private key. Hmm. Is it uh, like a key to authenticate as root? Let's uh, verify that. SSH-I uh, redis and root at ctf03 dot root me dot org. Mm, no, it's not. Do we have a user called Redis? Let's exit from the Redis CLI and grep Redis in etc pass wd. Nothing. Hmm. But the name of the key was called crack it. Does it mean that this one is protected with some kind of passphrase? What is this file? Redis private PEM RSA private key. Yeah, oh, okay. So this is a RSA private key. We need an SSH, I guess. Uh, I'm not sure. Let's continue reading the documentation here. Redis RCE, interactive shell, Redis rogue server. Okay, so that's promising. Is there anything? So this would require us to download a GitHub uh, script, I guess, onto the server. Is there anything easier? Let's see, continue reading PHP web shell. So we could write files as web shell, but we already have access to the, the web server. We need to actually escalate our privileges. SSH. Oh, okay, that's interesting. Query config set results change. Okay. Generate an SSH public private key pair on your PC. SSH keygen dash T RSA. Okay, let's do that. Um, I'm going to run it right inside our host. So here I am in the var WHTML. I'm just going to go to the home directory of Gemini um, CD. Oh, uh, that's the home directory of Gemini. No, it's under home Gemini one. Okay, 
oh, you can see here that uh, our file has been created, a uh, folder has been created here, and I guess it contains also our authorized keys. How hilarious, but the SSH didn't work. If you know how um, to do that, maybe drop me a co comment below. So here it says we need to generate a new SSH key. Okay, let's do that. SSH key gen dash T R S A. It's called ID R S A. We don't care. And if we go to dot SSH, um, actually, let's go to dot SSH. And here we have our uh, private key and the public key is here. ID RSA dot pub contains our per, uh, public key. So in the next video, we're going to continue on this path and see if we can get a access as root. As always, stay curious, keep learning and go find some bugs. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the ring bell in order to receive the video once it goes live.